So, hello everybody, it seems time flies and we're already at the end of October this year, but it's actually only four months since the release, the official announcement of CLAP, the Clever Audio plugin, but a lot of stuff happened during the summer period now. For example, there is an official page, cleveraudio.org now for CLAP, and they're adding content to this as well. And if you're interested, what is the philosophy behind CLAP, you can also read it up on that page. It also contains some interesting links, for example, to the GitHub page and also other useful resources. Also, Sonic State had another interesting interview, not specifically about Clap, but they had a talk with the GPU audio people. So GPU audio tries to run plugins now on graphics cards like NVIDIA graphic cards. And they say that they are now also looking into Clap as a potential interface to their implementation and that this would give them new options to do their thing. So interesting to watch that specific part in the video. I already mentioned that there is now a database about CLAP plugins and hosts and this grew massively if you look at this what happens now in the first four months. So we have now lots of instruments available and also 47 audio effects in only this short time, which is, I think, very impressive. And it's definitely worth to dive into that because there are many new creative developers among them and which have solutions which you might not see every day. There are also some well-known names among them as Yuhi, for example, which you also know as one initiator of the CLAP standard, and they already have now previews running of Ace, Diva and Hive, which you see in the screenshot. And we can also have a look at the real deal in a second. And MFM2, their updated, very complex delay plugin is now also in the final release available. So it's now officially supporting Clap. And I also heard the rumor that Bacilla, their modular plugin will be next ported to Clap. Let's have a little listen to that. What's going on here? So now in Bitwig. I have running here an instance, several instances of Hive randomly going here and also MFM2. And I'm using this now since their release and they work totally fine. And I think they will have a little less impact on the performance. So really nice addition to the setup here. But there are also other developers now looking into Clap and Tile Software is maybe not that wide known, but also a developer which is on the market since ages basically. And they just released several updates to the plugins which all now support the Clap standard. I think especially noteworthy is their update to their Tile Sampler. And if you, for example, do not like the way that, for example, Contact is going, just becoming a preset only player. And if you're looking for a uh, no non nonsense simple sampler you should definitely have a look at their device yeah also clap itself progressed a little bit most of the stuff is just clarifications on and improvements of the description in the api but there's also some little changes and the latest release of bitwig studio 44.1 comes now with the clap api version 111 from here as you see end of october when i'm doing this video but there is also now a tag for 112 with some more clarifications and if you go on a GitHub page of free audio clap and there is a change log and there you can read all the changes here in detail since the first release. And as you see, most of the stuff here is fixed to typo, documentation improvements and these things. So no big changes, but the clarifications are pretty interesting. I follow the discussions. You can also follow it if you want just to subscribe to the GitHub changes. You can follow these discussions as well about implementation details, but very important ones as well. And yeah, it's quite interesting if you're into that topic and want to develop with Clap yourself. Okay, there was also a discussion about can we use wrappers? So uh, Urs Heckmann of Yuhi talked about this for quite some time, that it makes sense to program against Clap as your main interface and then simply wrap it in a VST and AU. And they also promised that they want to bring this wrapper out for free. And it seems they are now getting closer and it's in the final stages. And I think they will move that to a public repository on GitHub as well in the next 
next weeks and then you will have also the option to have VST and as he wrote AU is next so I guess till the end of the year we might see here official support for that then you can simply wrap your plugin and have it available as VST and AU as well. Another interesting comment from Urs, which was worth mentioning, was the following. There was a discussion on one of these many KVR threads about CLAP. Is there any improvement when you do CLAP on an effect plugin in contrast to the instrument plugin? Because one of the benefits is here that you have this modulation per voice. And does it make sense to have this with your effect plugins as well? And the answer is that there is actually no real distinction between instruments or effects. It's just metered at the description. And so you can have a metadata attack that it's a specific delay effect or that it's an instrument, but you can also do both. So there might be applications where this makes sense that you have really different modulations in effect plugins for voices. But I think that's for all the developers now to become creative and think about what they could do with it. And I think we will see pretty interesting stuff in the future. Here you already see a prototype running, some pictures that was posted as well here. This simple uh, clap instrument demo which is running here nicely wrapped into the VST format here in Cubase and here in Ableton so this will be something that should work soon. So much for the end of October report about Clap, and I think we will see many many new things in the near future and until then make some funky music.